Hey guys, it's Hannah here, and today I have a yearly favourites video for you. I didn't end up doing one of these last year. I was wanting to go back and do a, like, reacting to my 2021 favourites, but I didn't do one. So, I wanted to sit down and do a yearly favourites. A lot of these are newer products to me this year, but then there are some staples that I've put in that are still going strong. So, let's just get into it. I'm going to go in order of application, but if you do know, I have been panning all year. So particularly when it comes to base products, um, I've been panning a lot of my base products. So they're usually not an absolute favorite if I'm panning it, um, or it's just old, which is what I have here. Oh my goodness. Anyway, let's just get into it. My favourite primer this year, so I did, was panning primers. I panned my Hourglass Veil, which is still an all-time favourite because I obviously went and repurchased the 60ml uh, bottle again, so it is still a favourite. But something I have had in my collection for a while but really discovered and appreciated this year was the Scandinavia Makeup Priming Spray Oil Control. Now, I used this through winter when I was painting my Misha BB cream, and I used this while I was in the States, in Florida, in the ridiculous heat. And I think this, in combination with the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray, was what made my base stay. And the products. Okay. I didn't get out one of the products because I haven't tested it at home. I really only used it while I was there. I haven't tested it at home. But it did last, so I, um, shit. Commendation shout out to the One Size Turn Up The Base Triple B Cream. This was what I wore. So I did my makeup twice most days. I did it in the morning. I'd come home, I'd take it off, I'd have a nap. Sorry, come back to the hotel, take it off, have a nap, and then reapply. This is what I'd wear in the evening. Um, and it lasted really well. And if you know it doesn't get cooler once it gets later in Florida, it stays just as hot until about... 8, 9 o'clock and then it starts to cool down. So that still put up with quite a bit of heat as well. But what I wore in the morning, and if I didn't apply twice, I was just using this, the uh, Turn Up The Base Powder Foundation. Phenomenal. So between this, the foundation, and the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray, my makeup did not budge until I took it off, even if it was only for six hours in that heat I can get very early and you could not tell big fan of this stuff foundation wise my sad empty bottle sneak peek at my empty Mac pro long wear foundation bottle I fell back in love with this when I started painting this I uh, in the job I'm working at or I have been working at and will be can like going into a similar role next year full time. Um, I don't need a full coverage foundation, which is scary because I look at my drawer and there's a lot of full coverage in there. But this is a really nice everyday foundation for me. It's not too matte, it's not too dewy, it sits really beautifully on the skin and it wears really well, hence the name Pro Long Wear. This was a favorite for me so many years ago and I've fallen back in love I cannot shout the praises of this enough. I will not be repurchasing it straight away because I have so many foundations to go through. My foundation drawer looks ridiculous because I have bought too many foundations this year. I think I've only bought two foundations this year. Anyway, I need, I have been buying a lot of foundations in the last couple of years and I haven't been going through them. So my focus is on going through my products <laughs> next year, the next year again. Um, particularly the ones that are about half empty. I have two that I'm staring at that will be the next two out of my collection, possibly. Anyway, really like this foundation and the more natural look it gives to my skin and the more natural coverage. Which ties in perfectly to my good old faithful Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Dark Circle. Oh my goodness, I fell back in love with this this year. I have probably gone through about a third of it uh, and I had to put it away because I need to go through my older concealers. But 
but this is the same thing. Um, this is what I'd wear with the one size powder. <sighs> Just the way it makes my skin look is phenomenal. I'm moving away from the full coverage. I'm moving into that more natural coverage, skin-like, but still matte because that's just how I am. can do a little bit of glow in the cooler months, but in summer, not that it feels like summer. <laughs> Today's kind of the most summer it's been in a while, and then it's going to get nice and hot for Christmas and New Year's. But basically the weather's been insane, so I haven't been super oily. Um, thank goodness. As I say that, I'm going to die the next week. I'm just really off topic today. Can you tell I haven't filmed in a while? Really love the Instant Age Rewind Concealer. I've panned a lot of loose powders this year. But when I haven't been panning loose powders, I, again, have rediscovered my love of the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. The way this sets my makeup, I think we all understand where I'm at now. <laughs> like if... We're three, we're three products in on what I like my skin to look like. Four products in on what I like my skin to look like. Love this stuff. And big fan of the One Size Turn Up The Base Powder Foundation. This stuff is incredible. Really great coverage for a powder foundation. That still makes my skin look like I want it to. There it is. All right. I still love my Marc Jacobs bronzer, but and when I get to lip liners, I still love Marc Jacobs, but it's not around anymore. So I'm not going to mention my Marc Jacobs favourites. What I'm going to mention is for bronzer, the Nabla Skin Bronzing Powder in Amber. This has a soft sheen to it, so it just looks really healthy on the skin. It often goes missing from my collection because my sister also loves this bronzer. Um... And I'll be like, where is it? She will just, there's a couple of things. This and my JD Glow palette in particular are the ones that go missing the most. Laura Mercier can go missing. I always know where they are. Erin has taken them. But this bronzer is so beautiful. It blends in seamlessly on the skin. I'm wearing Marc Jacobs today, not this. Um, but it is beautiful. And I just love the effect it always gives my skin. Blushes. If you watched, so middle of the year, I did my top 10 purchases for the first half of 2022 and mentioned the Glow Play blush in So Natural. I love this blush formula. I have So Natural and I have Blush Please. So Natural is more peachy nude um, and Blush Please is more like movey every day. Basically, if I've got warmer tones on, I go this one. If I've got cooler tones on, I go this one. Um, blush Please is definitely getting relatively flat. And I have some softening going on the dome of um, So Natural. It's beautiful. But if I do want a powder blush... But still a little bit of glow to give me that natural look. Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Cheek to Chic Blush. I remember getting this and being really disappointed that um, it was glowy. The box had a different name on it, not Cheek to Chic. Um, and I was really upset that it was glowy when I purchased it. Because I wasn't into a glowy chick. I was into all matte everywhere. And then targeted highlight. <sighs> this blush goes with anything. It blends itself. I don't I don't know what I want to wear. Charlotte took the pillow talk. Let's shout out another old faithful Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Highlight 01. Don't know what I want to wear. Laura Mercier. It is natural, glowy, elegant, beautiful. If I want something more intense, though, I do like MAC Double Gleam because it has a transparent base and it just gives a really gorgeous wet look on the skin. 
Beautiful. I'm not wearing any of these today though. <laughs> I'm wearing my Marc Jacobs bronzer. Why does that feel like it's loose? And my Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk cheek palette. So I'm wearing Charlotte Tilbury cheek still. Brows. I have been trying to pan the Benefit Precise in my brow all year. So much so that these, but I very rarely fill in my brows completely with pencil. But I have like the last two months and oh my goodness, I forgot how good it is. When I don't have fresh done brows, so I have fresh done brows right now. So I don't have this in at all. But once my brows are a little bit grown out, this makes my brows still look really natural, but it just elevates them. And I'm a big fan. What I have in my brows today is the Magic Brows by Emco. So sorry if you're not in Australia. This is um, Emco's version of the original Benefit Gimme Brow, not the Gimme Brow Plus. That is now that is stupid. Um, the one with the fibers, and that's what I have in my brows today. And it was the last use. This is about to go in my empties, which you'll see next. Um, it is quite inexpensive and really fantastic at holding the brows, giving them the color and the fiber fill. I've got the NYX Thicket Stick It to try next, but really enjoyed this. I don't have a favorite cream shadow because I have been focusing on painting them and none of them were huge favorites, but I do have, I've had a love affair with small palettes this year. Kaja Beauty Bento in Peach Madeline I picked up in the States and have worn so many times since. If I'm really lazy, I will put the matte all over the lid and call it quits. I did that while in Disney quite a few times and I loved it. I did it the same with the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. That's another thing. Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow. I bought <laughs> two new quads and two singles this year. Um, but I did the same with the Pinky Matte in Pillow Talk as well. Charlotte Tilbury Shadows. Charlotte Tilbury Powder Products. Let's be honest. Charlotte Tilbury Powder Products are divine. Um, but Peach Madeline, my Colourpop quads. Um, I have my two old ones, not my new Sorbet one because I haven't used that enough. But Dare to Bear is just a fantastic all matte palette and then I'll go and pick something like the Charlotte Tilbury Rose Gold or Diamond Eyes Pop Shot and pop that on the lid and it's beautiful. Um, still into all my sparklies. Um, but um, Head Capricorn in Charge is like an easy go-to every day. Just fantastic. It's definitely on the cooler side with the taupey, but it's divine. And my Natasha Denona minis. I didn't get out my mini star because I haven't worn that anywhere near as much as I've worn Nude and Bieber, but big fan. Eyeliners. I have two. Uh, again, if you watch that first half of the year, the Stila Stay All Day Micro Tip Brown Eyeliner. Game changer. Game changing eyeliner. It makes such a precise tiny wing. It is fantastic. However, if you want a darker brown, KVD Tattoo Liner in Mad Max Brown is the darkest brown without going black liner and it is gorgeous. And then on my lashes today, and what has been on my lashes for the last six months? Different tubes, don't worry guys. Rare Beauty. Has it been six months? Or did I only get this when I was in the States? Maybe it's only been three months. Red Beauty. I don't know what this mascara is called. But it's beautiful. Um, it may give my hourglass caution a run for its money. There, I said it. It is gorgeous. I love what it does to my lashes. As I said, I'm not mentioning Marc Jacobs. I'm not mentioning Primrose. Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. I've been panning it because I love it. And there's nothing wrong with it. 
But what I'll do is I'll fill my lips in fully with either Primrose or Pillow Talk. And I've been topping it with balms. And that's been my go-to every day. Lip product. MAC Glow Palais Sweet Heart Lip Balm. Again, I think that was in that first half purchases. It's just... I haven't swatched anything, but I'll swatch this. Just a really beautiful, sheer, peachy nude. But what I've incidentally been panning is Pat McGrath Blow Up. Which is slightly deeper. <laughs> like, le legit, that's it. I've been incidentally... Not incidentally. I've just been wearing it all the time. And it's gorgeous. And setting my face with the Benefit Pore Professional Super Setter Spray. Again, Charlotte Tilbury kept my makeup on in Florida, but I haven't used it since being back home. So I can't call it a favourite, but every day, this stuff, really good. Okay, that is it for my makeup favourites. Um, in general, beauty favourites, cleansing balms, big fan, pharmacy, belief. Pharmacy if you want a scent, belief if you want unscented. Gorgeous. Niacinamide, um, Paula's Choice 10% Booster in whatever you're using. Beautiful. Paula's Choice uh, SPF 30, whatever it is. Fantastic. Cannot recommend that sunscreen enough. Divine. Yeah. Those are kind of the things that really stand out to me. Glow Recipe... Um, Avocado Melt Retinol Eye Mask. I've repurchased that. It's not here yet, but I have purchased it. And Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask and Lip Glowy Balms. Those are my favourite things for 2022. Sorry, it was really rambly. I haven't filmed in a little while. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what products you loved this year, what I should try out. Click subscribe to stay tuned for more videos and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.